Welcome back to these short talks on improving our programming tools. If you want a proper introduction, watch the first episode in the series. Today's talk is about speed and eye tracking. I like my programming tools to be quick to interact with. I'll show ideas for how eye tracking could be a fast input method to complement the keyboard. First, I'll talk about speed. Then we'll do a little case study on a super common task when reading and writing code, uh, the task of moving the carrots. And I'll show how eye tracking could help speed it up. This is simple and kind of obvious. Then I'll describe another common task uh, with a more advanced solution, which uh, builds on my call graph navigator from episode four. I'll show my prototype, which you can play with too, even if you don't have an eye tracker. Some people say that the speed of a code editor doesn't matter because we think so much more than we type. But even thinking involves actively moving around in the code to, to read it, and any lag can hurt your flow. The ideal is instant feedback. From the time you decide to do something to seeing it happen on screen, the, the delay should be imperceptible, just like playing an instrument. That's an ideal to aim for, but of course we can't always reach it in practice. Some tasks we ask the computer to do are just too complicated to happen instantly. But generally, software today is much slower than it should be. If you want to learn more about that, listen to Casey Muratori and his performance of our programming. But even if a program is super fast in the sense of having no lag, it can still feel slow to use. When it's slow for me as a human to enter the correct input, that's a different kind of slowness. It could be slow to do a long series of mouse clicks on small buttons, or it could be struggling to press some complex key combination on the keyboard or struggling to remember it. So this is about good human-computer interaction design. The ideal input is intuitive to learn, but as a professional who codes every day, I think fast is more important than intuitive. I can accept some things that are not so easy to learn if they make me fast in the long run, like Vim style editing. I've written code professionally for 25 years, but seven years ago I decided finally to learn Vim style editing, where you keep your fingers in the alphanumeric area and you don't reach for the arrow keys and such. It wasn't intuitive, it was a painful learning process. At first I was much slower with Vim than with normal text editing controls. Then I gradually got faster and finally I beat my old speed, which felt great. Editing just flows better now. So I've been thinking about what we could do to get even faster speed. And one pretty slow action, even in Vim, is to move the text cursor far away on screen. I mean far away as in you're editing some code near the bottom of your screen, and now you want to move to a specific place in the top right corner of the screen. There are several ways to move there, like holding the up key for a while, or you could trace from your goal, visually trace a horizontal line towards the left column, where you see the line number, could be absolute or relative, for example 26. Next you type 26k to move up that many steps. Then once you're on the correct line, you're going to move left or right to the final position. The alternative is to use a mouse, of course, but then you have to move your hand away from the keyboard to grab your mouse and aim and click, and finally move your hand back. Now all that might take less than a second, so what's the big deal? The big deal is that we do it thousands of times per day, so even a small improvement would be valuable. Can't we come up with something better? Well, what's the fastest possible way to pinpoint a character on screen? To look at it, of course. So that's the idea. I bought an eye tracker to test it. Here it is from the Swedish company, 
to be. This is not advertisement, by the way. So here I am looking at some code in Visual Studio, but with a circle that shows where I'm looking. The circle is quite big because the eye tracker doesn't have the same precision as a mouse. My real gaze is somewhere inside this circle, but not necessarily smack in the center. When people think of eye tracking as an input mechanism, they often think about completely replacing the mouse, including pointing and clicking, but that's not the kind of use case I'm talking about here. Pointing with the eyes is fast, but clicking on the other hand, I'm not aware of any fast way to trigger clicks with the eyes without also often triggering them by accident. So we should do our clicks with a keyboard. That's faster and more accurate. I imagine that we would look at our target position and press a specific keyboard key, which means move carrot to where I'm looking. Since the eye tracker precision isn't perfect, we might not end up at our wanted position. Sometimes it will be off by a few characters or lines, but then since we're close, it doesn't take much time to use keyboard navigation for the fine adjustment. I guess this is quite an obvious idea to come up with, so it turns out I'm not the first one to do it. I found this extension to Visual Studio 2019, which has exactly this feature and more, but there's room for improvement, so I kept experimenting. One detail we could improve is in how the eye tracker position gets converted to a text position. I don't think it should work exactly like clicking with a mouse. In typical text editors, a mouse click will first select a line and then the nearest character inside that line. So if two neighbor lines have very different lengths and your aim is one line off, you might end up in a completely wrong spot. But I think the eye tracker should select the character that's closest to the gaze position regardless of which line it's on, so that even if I'm one line off, I'll still hit a nearby target and the fine adjustment is quick. Another small improvement, if I immediately press the magic keyboard key again, the tool can assume I wasn't satisfied to end up at the current position, so don't go to the same position again, select the closest character except this one. And if I press a third time, select the closest character except the previous two, and so on. So that was the super common everyday task and a speed up with eye tracking. I've been using this in my daily work for two years now, and it's nice. Not amazingly revolutionary or anything, just nice. Can we think of another common task, which is kind of slow, which we might speed up with eye tracking? We solved how to move the carrot to a different point on screen, but what about moving much further away in the code? In today's editors, we move around in several ways. One way is scrolling up and down. Another way is to type some quick search string to jump to a matching place in the code. Both can be kind of slow. Searching for a string can be slow because I need to think, I need to recall what to search for. Uh, what was that function called again? Was it validate or require or check? Uh, oh, 50 search hits, that's, that's too many. Let me think of a more unique string. Even a fuzzy search feature wouldn't help much here. Even if I'm quite familiar with some code, I often prefer to scroll. I think it's down to the difference between recognition and recall. It takes more mental effort to actively recall the name of something unique in the code and type it in a search box. It takes less mental effort to just scroll and look for it. Um, keep scrolling, um, I'll recognize it when I see it uh, a little further down. Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. I think it's similar to how people easily recognize the shape of the continents or a bike but people are not good at recalling the correct shape from memory to draw it. Or it's similar to how your active vocabulary has fewer words than your passive vocabulary with all the words you understand but never use. So scrolling is nice, and it can be kind of slow if you have a long file to scroll through. So maybe use eye tracking for scrolling up and down? That Visual Studio extension has support for scrolling. 
I can look near the top of the window and press a key to scroll up, or look near the bottom of the window to scroll down. Mm, nah, nah, I don't really feel a benefit of eye tracking here. Seems better to just scroll with the keyboard. But maybe there's another way to browse around in the code and recognize something when we see it. Maybe instead of scrolling up and down, maybe we could zoom in and out. In episodes 2 and 4, I showed two kinds of code visualizations using zooming as an interaction. We could add eye tracking to them. My starting point was this call graph navigator from episode 4, which was not programmed by the way. It was just still pictures and some animation made in a graphics program. Now I've actually programmed it as a prototype. I haven't prototyped all feature ideas from episode 4, just the minimum we need to be able to explore eye tracking and zooming. So for a small example program, we lay out the function names and connect them with these funnel shapes based on who calls who. Here you might wonder, what if your program has thousands of functions? I showed ideas for that and more in episode 4. The first thing we should do in this prototype is to choose a font size that we can comfortably read, either with these plus or minus buttons, or like we usually change font size in the browser, control scroll wheel. There, that's hopefully readable even if you're watching this in low resolution. I can control this prototype not just with eye tracking, but also with the mouse scroll wheel. Initially, we just see the function names and a bit of the parameter list, but if we zoom in a bit, we start to see the function bodies. Their text is too small to read, of course, but we can see which functions are big and small, which seems valuable. It can already help us with recognition. Now, the benefit of eye tracking here could be that I don't have to reach for the mouse. If I look somewhere and press the zoom in key on the keyboard, what should happen? My true gaze point is somewhere inside this circle of uncertainty. The tool could simply zoom into the center. But I think it's better to find all functions that intersect the circle and zoom until they fill the screen. I was actually looking at one of these, but now that they fill the screen, I can go again with better accuracy because my targets are bigger. This time I hit only two functions, so we zoom in until they fill the screen, and I repeat this until I hit a single target. I have one keyboard key to zoom in, and another to zoom out. I prioritize showing the function name because I think that's the most important thing we recognize. But if we zoom in and there's more room, I start to also show the parameter list, and if there's even more room, I show the return type too. I'm not sure that's the best priority ranking, also not sure how to adapt it to all languages. Some languages have name, parameters and return type in a different order. What do you think? You can see that the function body is displayed like in my episode 2. The outermost lines have a readable font size, but deeply nested lines are smaller. I think this gives a nice overview. Of course we can continue to zoom in until everything is at full font size. Then zoom out one step to the whole function, and zoom out another step to the whole graph. You can try the prototype yourself at emilprogviz.com slash call dash graph dash nav. Best seen at a computer, not a smartphone. You can't really experience the eye tracking, but you can use a mouse and pretend that it's an eye tracker. You can zoom in with left mouse button, and you can zoom out with the escape key. And I'm sorry, but you can't load your own code into this prototype. This example is hard-coded. To turn this into a real tool, a lot of work remains. Wouldn't this be cool to have? Wouldn't this be a fast and intuitive way to navigate code? It plays nice with recognition rather than recall. You can cover more ground than with scrolling. And with eye tracking, it would allow you to keep your hands on the keyboard more and reach for the mouse less. Do you think you would use it? What would you add to it? Let me know what you think. 
and let's hope my next video doesn't also take four years.